Sophie. From four very different perspectives. On the crazy and unpredictable world of professional wrestling, as a pure theory creations entertainment network presents a live interactive show where you can be part of a conversation of all things professional wrestling, from the major leagues to the independents. This is Fatal Four Way Live on Owen TV. And we welcome you to the Fatal Four Way live here on ONTV, along with Brian Boff, Sean Grugel, Hollywood Q. I'm Jason Klaus. We certainly appreciate you taking time off the show to give this a listen. Listen, if you if you had access to what goes on right before we go on the air, we would probably be kicked off the air if, if we're being honest, <laughs> gentlemen. We have a lot to talk about. We are uh, the, the summer months are here upon us, and the action within the realm of professional wrestling is heating up across the board, across all the major pr promotions. But the world of professional wrestling is still talking about the Money in the Bank Premium Live event that took place last weekend in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. We're going to get. <laughs> There's been mixed reviews. There, there's been no doubt about it. And for the first time, okay. we are going to actually incorporate the star system into this because Ooh. you guys have not been privy to the announcement of what one Dave Meltzer, uh, you know, created these matches with his star system. We'll get into that, but. Uh, Let's go down the card here, you know, and the guy everyone is talking about right now is Drew McIntyre, who wins the Money in the Bank ladder match, the men's Money in the Bank ladder match, cashes in later on in the night unsuccessfully. A lot of controversy with this in relation to Damian Priest and Seth Rollins. We'll get to that uh, in a little bit. But in terms of the men's Money in the Bank match, Q, was Drew McIntyre the right guy? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. That's why he's the best in the business, folks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I, I said it before, uh, it was pretty much story driven. It was all about Drew and the story what he got going on with CM Punk. And uh, the fact that he also cashed it in, I know we're probably gonna get to that later, but. Yeah. Spoiler right alert. Here. Spoiler alert, yeah. <laughs> he cashed it in. I, and, I'm with the whole thing with as, as far as the results. Okay. Sean, you and I went back and forth about this match. Uh, you know, I had originally said, geez, I really think this should be L.A. Knight's match. Uh, you know, but we sat here and watched it unfold. Drew McIntyre wins this thing. Um, we knew Drew McIntyre was going to be the favorite going into this just based on the story with the World Heavyweight Championship and everything that happened at the last premium live event. Uh, with Damian Priest. Uh, in terms of winning money in the bank and what we would see later on, was this a lost opportunity on, on this match? Yeah, yeah, they completely threw this match away as far as I'm concerned. They wasted it on the storyline between him and CM Punk and Seth Rollins. This really needed to be about someone else. It could have been about Jay Uso, giving him that boost that he needed. I feel like they failed Gunther with this pay-per-view. Um, I mean, we didn't hear nothing about Gunther at all, even through commentary. Uh, if you had the premium package of Peacock during one of the commercial breaks leading into the main event, they ran a three-minute uh, video package on Gunther, but not everybody saw it. Look, man, I'm just a poor fat man from <laughs> Holly, okay? <laughs> I, I can't afford that premium stuff. Gunther needed to have some sort of involvement in this. I mean, he really should have made his presence known as far as I'm concerned. After all, he is the King General and up for a title shot here soon. He should have, in my opinion, played some sort of pivot in this match. Understandable. You were over here sh shaking your head, Brian. What, what was your feeling about the men's Money in the Bank ladder match? Were you happy with, with the McIntyre win? Would you have gone on another route here? Um, no, I'm happy with it. Other than Chad Gable, which I could see some storylines working out well with him with the case. 
Uh, I think McIntyre was a great option. Even more so, I love the fact that he cashed in immediately. And for once, we're not going to have a year-long storyline about this case. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of sick of hearing about the case. I mean, we've seen it over and over again. Seems like everyone's waiting to the last minute to cash in. Well, a lot of times with the case, though, they actually build the worker that wins the case. Case in point with Damian Priest. Yeah. This That's is a good example. Of the bank. Yeah. And that was my whole thing about this match, because like I said, I had originally gone with L.A. Knight. Like, man, you really should do something with him. But then as the match was unfolding and I started looking at everybody that was in this match, I felt like, man, maybe Jay Uso sh should have been the one because everybody else in that match has a story at least going into SummerSlam. You know, uh, with with like Chick, Abel, and Otis, and then L.A. Knight and Logan Paul. We we called this earlier in the year that this should be the United States t title match in Cleveland. Um, but yeah, they went they went the McIntyre route, and as we would see all this unfold later on, I'm very much with you. Uh, they could have done a lot more with this, but they didn't. Now, Dave Meltzer. <laughs> uh oh! Oh, here we go. Uh, you want to you, you want to perk up some, some ears? You mentioned that man's name. Like, what? He re he released the star system, gentlemen. He gave the men's money in the bank ladder match four stars in this. Really? Yeah. Where are you at on that? That's Dave LaGreca's brother-in-law. Has to be. Um, <laughs> Is this out of twenty stars? Like <laughs> four out of five. Oh, four five. Out of five. Yeah, right. You know, I can. So eighty percent B minus. I respect Dave Meltzer for his knowledge of history, his grading system. I've talked about this many, many times on the hot tag. Not a fan. You know, if it was me to give a star rating, I don't know, this match is probably a, at about, it was average, two and a half at best out of five. What do you think, Q? Uh, for me, yeah, probably about average, yeah. But for me, I know this whole, it, the whole thing is opinionated. Right, you know, well, it's, for sure. It's straight Very out of subjective. his mine you know this is what he thinks of that match i'm glad he enjoyed it but uh <laughs> <laughs> you know it's definitely like like 2.5 for me what do you think brian yeah i'm gonna go in the same i'm, I'm like i'm tr trying to play the match back in my head remember highlights <laughs> and stuff and i'm like i'm not thinking of any so maybe that should reflect the star system rating so yeah i, I'm, I would go like two two and a half yeah i i was th i was going to go two Two seems yeah, about right. Personally. Um, the, the the next match on this card, and this was one that had, had me in fits. I don't mind telling you. <laughs> uh, Sami Zayn retained the Intercontinental Championship with a victory over Braun Breaker. Uh, I, Meltzer gave this thing three and three-quarter stars. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we, got, we can do quarters. Oh. Yeah, yes. <laughs> three and three-quarter stars for Zayn. Retaining the Intercontinental Championship. I thought br this was Breaker's night. He should have won the title here. Just my opinion. Brian, we'll start with you. You, Where, where were you at on this? <laughs> See, the star system is weird because, like, do I... I think Breaker looked amazing in that match. Mm -hmm. So I want to go high because of that. Outcome-wise, I would go low-end. So now you guys are mad. Yeah, so I'm like, <laughs> do I go uh, go two, two and a quarter? Yeah. But basically, that's all based on Braun looking like a monster, like always in it. Sean, why are they pushing Sami Zayn as the giant killer here in WWE? He knocks off Gunther at, at WrestleMania to win the thing. Now, now we see why, because Gunther is on the cusp of the biggest push of, of his entire c career. But now it's Braun Breaker, and this is the guy on the rise. This is the guy that they should be taking care of to really build him, in my view, as one of the next main event stars of this new era, especially as we're moving into Netflix at the start, at the start of the new year. Where, where, where are you at with this? Well, the reason why they're pushing him is, is because of his relationship with Adam Sandler. As we both know, he starred in the movie Happy Gilmore <laughs> as his caddy. And, <laughs> oh, am I not right on this? No, no. Uh, we um, talked about it on the hot tag. I even pulled a picture up on it. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I have no idea why. I don't know why they're pushing Sammy down our throats. 
Um, I think it's time for Braun Breaker to really break out and, and be the star that he is. I will say, much like Brian, I enjoyed this match better than the men's uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. Mm -hmm. I, I would probably give that two and three quarter stars. Is Sami Zayn the new honky tonk man in terms of the guy you cannot man. take the title <laughs> off of? <laughs> Don't do this to me. <laughs> I do not care for the honky tonk I, man. You guys know this. It's not a secret. I am not a big honky tonk man fan. But anyway. The greatest intercontinental <laughs> champion of oh all time, God. not named Luther. Jeez. Or any fan of anybody with, with a guitar. All right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah screw all those guys. Really? Man Mountain Rock? <laughs> oh, for <laughs> Pete's sake. This is getting out of hand. <laughs> <laughs> We're off the rails this week, for sure. As far as... Uh, I'm back. <laughs> as far as, you know, Sami Zayn, uh, he has a nice fan base. He has a nice fan base, and I see why they want to try to please those guys. I'm not the biggest Sami Zayn guy, and he's, he's funny and all that stuff. But uh, there's two, th two things I want to say about this match. Um, for one... The plus that I got out of him winning this match is the fact that they didn't diminish the defeat that he, uh, you know, he, he defeated Gunther. Mm -hmm. You don't want him to look weak, like, oh, man, okay. this weak guy defeated Gunther. You got to kind of make him look good, you know, because Fair he argument. did defeat Gunther. Now, Brown Breaker's getting this belt. But I said the same thing about Chad Gable. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little nervous about how this is going. They, 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 they kind of won me back over on Monday Night Raw the next night when uh, Braun took him out. I believe that that belt is coming over to Braun. As far as the ratings on this match, two and a half. Okay. If you have an opinion of these matches that were breaking down money in the bank as a whole, you are invited to call into the show. The number is at the bottom of your screen, 810-331-2829. <laughs> All right, now, this comes the more controversial of, this is what a lot of people t took away from the Money in the Bank premium live event, uh, was the debacle towards the end of the World Championship match between Damian Priest and Seth Rollins. Storyline-wise, this match made all the sense in the world. And I really looked forward to this match. We were here two weeks ago and tried to give Damian Priest his flowers. Give this guy an opportunity. He's trying. He really is trying. But then we get to Money in the Bank. And the boxed finish, the failed cash-in attempt by Drew McIntyre, who, who comes down during the course of this match, turns it into a triple threat. By hook or by crook, Damian Priest leaves Money in the Bank with the World Heavyweight Championship and apparently is on the collision course with Gunther at SummerSlam. This match got three and three quarter stars, Q. All right, start from the beginning. <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute, what match are we talking about? Damien Priest. We're talking about Damien Priest. Yeah. yeah. Wow, he got three and a half? No, no, three, 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 three and three quarters. Three quarters. Yes. Three, oh, wow, interesting. Interesting. Mm -hmm. All right, well, let's dissect this thing because yes. there was a lot of. Uh, issues that happened within this match. I mean, wow. Okay, um, as far as Damian Priest, he's, he's, doing, he's doing a great job. He's doing better than I thought he was going to do. The botch with the pinfall and everything, you know, I need to hear the whole story on that, you know, before I really, uh, I want to hear the whole story. Like, what was, what did they tell him to do? You know, that, that's, that's where I'm at on that. Uh, but the right winner did win. I do believe that, uh, Priest should be the one. You gotta, you gotta kind of like give this guy some momentum. I mean, he's, he's, if he's gonna be the one facing Gunther, you got these two big dudes going at it, man. You gotta make him at least look good. As far as the match, though, a rating for that match, I would also give this match a 2.5. I'm 2.5 all the way across so far. Right, right. You're very average. No, I'm very <laughs> average, very average. Sean, we talked on the Hot Tag podcast yesterday about, um, you know, we openly wondered what all what all happened during the course of that match that allowed or didn't allow Priest to, to kick out when he was, obviously he was supposed to. 
and whether or not the Drew McIntyre cash in was was an audible call right. because of how the guys were kind of interacting with one another. I I pointed out if you go back and watch McIntyre's overall aura and presentation as he's you know walking out to cash in, I felt like man, this is something that he he was not ready for. Like they they called an audible when they boxed the end of the match with Rollins turning this into a triple threat match. Three and three quarter stars, though. All right. Well, much like you, I'm going to dissect this a little bit. You know, I I went back and I've been watching some of the TikTok uh, clips. You watch Priest when he's being pinned by Seth. He's actually trying to get feeling back into his fingers. He had his bell rung. Um, My biggest issue now with the botch is the fact that the referee counted three. Uh... But he said that he didn't. That takes away the magic of professional wrestling. You know, uh, all referees, and yeah, let's peel back the curtain because, you know, there is no such thing as kayfabe anymore. When referees are trained, if they count three, it's a three count. The referee's word is final. Seth Rollins won that title. Um, I think the audible was called. And I don't think Drew was happy about it, but that was the only way they could get Punk out there to continue that feud. Uh, The referee was the one who made the botch in this match. People need to stop focusing on Priest. Priest did the best thing that he could. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, when you look at the look on Drew's face, when you look at the look on uh, Seth's face especially, I mean, that looked like legitimate anger between him and Punk. I mean, that... Emmy Award yeah, right there. Yeah, they're playing it up real nice. But, uh, yeah, the, the match itself, though, average at best with Q, two and a half stars. Priest retains, Brian. Mm-hmm. So on paper, it's him and Gunther at SummerSlam. You know, we got to fill 55,000 people into the stadium, and they're going to fill a good portion of that just based on the name of the event alone. Would they have benefited from Rollins in, in, in the role as world champion? And as Sean was just talking, it made me think about, could they possibly be adding the two other co- components of this broader storyline and make this a fatal four-way? No pun intended. I was going to say, that's us. <laughs> <laughs> For the world title with Gunther, Priest, Rollins, and McIntyre. Could, could they do that? I don't think they will. I mean, obviously they can do whatever they want. Right. But no, I and I and I'm. I think Priest is the better person to have in that spot. I don't have any logic behind it, but in my head, I'm like, yeah. And as far as you went, when you were saying about the fingers and stuff like that, I've been choked out in jujitsu, a couple times, and I call that playing the imaginary piano. You're. I've had my hand chewed up and do this. It, it It is a reaction to, like, head trauma. Mm-hmm. Like, it happens. I don't think that was an audible call. Uh, I know that referee has been fined before in the past for making mistakes. I think it was a main event with Charlotte. The it, yep, yeah. he messed up there before. Uh, yeah, so that's, that, that's an interesting call on who botched that. I'd like to see a little bit more. Like, it, it could have been fallen on priest but it could have been from the injury it could have been ref it could have been that music was supposed to have been queued up seconds beforehand right but man if they would have went with that three count then you would have had you would have had one you would had priest out of judgment yep then you would have had that have been a one-on-one match and then that means there's no interference allowed because it's can't get involved yep i mean that would have changed everything For sure, uh, it's just it was crazy to watch all that unfold, and that's where you got to see reality really take take center stage because everybody was sitting there scratching their heads like, what in the world is going on? Yeah. Uh, what we know what went on after the fact was Tiffany Stratton. Now we're picking <laughs> things up. <laughs> hey, I never got to see my stars. Oh, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Star? I'm sorry. What what was your stars? Three. Really? Three. Yeah. Okay. Because I got the money in the bank case out of the way and I don't have to see it all. 
Fair. See, I'm with that. Yeah. <laughs> that was a bonus for me. Okay. I'm with, I'm with that. Yeah. I can understand the logic. All right. Well, circling back around, Tiffany Stratton wins the Women's Money in the Bank uh, ladder match. That's She was the odds-on favorite, not only among the panel here, but among the majority of the fans in Toronto. Sean, was she the right one? And is she on? Is she going to cash in? Is she going to be the one that uh, that continues the 100% cash in success rate that the women have had since their inclusion in Money in the Bank? Yes, and yes. I mean, I think she's going to carry it around for almost a year. Mm. I think it's going to be an accessory to her outfits. Yep. I think we're going to see. You know the pink and fuzzy attached, you know, cre briefcase. Um, it's gonna match her outfits. Um, it's gonna become a big gimmick for her. It, it's gonna become a weapon. It's going to, you know, it's going to build her the way the money in the bank should build a person. Is she ready for the heavyweight title yet? No. Uh, who's she gonna go after? Is she gonna go after Bailey? Is she gonna go after Mommy? Because we know Liv isn't gonna hold the title forever. Um, there's, there's a whole lot to go on with Tiffany Stratton at this point. Myself, personally, if she is to go after anybody now, I would say Bailey, because Bailey's lost all kinds of momentum yeah. at this point. And there's no room for her on Raw. So I think the best option is to build her for the next six to eight months. Oh, yeah, star rating? I was going to wait till after we went, went around. Okay, here. good deal. Um, a lot of people called this match the match of the night. Would you agree? Uh, Say yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Tiffany Stratton was was the right one in your. Oh, view. absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, oh, it definitely. Sorry. I don't know. It's fine. I'm like I agree. I think she's gonna hold it for a while. It's gonna be accessory. It's gonna be used for promotions the whole time. Man, I don't know if Bailey gets out of SummerSlam against Nia. And I could see. As much as they've been buddied, buddied up, Tiffany's the type of person that will turn on a front real quick. Oh, for sure. Well, I'll be honest with you. Jason and I kind of talked about this a little bit. I think we're going to see Nia as a transitional champion. Oh, well, I thought you were going to say something else. No, oh, Nia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Let's get back on the rails there, Mr. Balf. Um, <laughs> I think Nia's going to take the belt. And then we're going to see Jade take the belt from Nia, which is going to lead into our feud with Bianca and Jade into WrestleMania, which is why I think Tiffany's going to have to hold on to that belt for a while. Where are you at, Q? I, I agree with you, both of you guys, pretty much. Uh, Tiffy was the right person, and uh, she's going to – I want to see her hold it for a long time. We haven't, we haven't seen a woman hold the briefcase longer than, like, a day. <laughs> or, I mean, in a very long time. Right. It seems like they're always catching in real quick. Uh, so I want to see, I think Carmella was the longest one who, uh, who actually held it the longest. Yep. So I want to see Tiffy hold it for a, a year. I mean, even if she cash in on Money in the Bank next year, I don't even care. But I want her to hold it for a long time. And, uh, and I do kind of see Nia kind of like, she might take Bailey out. But, it, but that also creates that dynamic between Tiffy and Nia, like for a nice little stretch. You know, are, are you gonna cash? Can I trust you? You know, are you gonna cash in on me? Or, you know, I'm gonna still try to help you out, but I don't, I don't know. Looking over the shoulder type of uh, situation. So, kind of what I thought. See, in the beginning, I thought uh, Finn Balor was gonna be in the men's and he was gonna win the briefcase and do that to Priest. So, I kind of see that with these two. Four and a quarter stars. Okay. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Four and a quarter. Uh, the highest rated match on the card, according to Mr. Meltzer. Uh -huh. are, you, are, you, are you okay with that rating? You I wouldn't go that high, but no. I'm definitely okay with it being the highest rated one. Because yeah. in my head, I'm like, four, one, two, five, four, one. There's just so much more that could be left that would make it a higher rating for me. I think I would go four at the most. I'm going to go like 3.9. <laughs> the, uh, the main event of this show in terms of the match that, that closed the pay-per-view out, the Bloodline gets a much-needed win over WWE Champion Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, and Kevin Owens. 
this match really could have gone either way, but the way that I see this, they have set up the WWE Championship match for SummerSlam with Solo Sokoa, not only trying to really establish himself as the head of the table of the new version of the Bloodline, he pinned Rhodes to win the match for, for his team. This match got three and three quarter stars. Where you at on this, Q? Uh, as far as this match, I don't remember too much about it except for Cody getting pinned and Jacob was in the match. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to give this one. Just, just because of Jacob, dude is a beast. I give it three stars just because of Jacob. That's my guy. I'm glad to see him. And even the tease that, I mean, the, the, some of the things in the commentary are pretty much uh, including now in the commentary. They, they even brought up the fact that they had a hard time getting him into Canada. With the old regime, they would have never even mentioned that. Right. The yeah. fact that they even brought that up and put it in the story because he's so vicious, he, we had to pull strings just to get him into Canada. That, that boosted from two, two, two and three quarters all the way up to three just because they said that. You bring up a good point. How important has the commentary been in furthering the storyline and really trying to keep things on the rails because a casual fan could get lost in the whole bloodline storyline. Where's Roman Reigns if, if, they're, if they're not paying attention? But their commentary has been, um, has been crucial in, in the way the storyline has played out on television. Uh, with Solo Sokoa, you know, pinning the WWE champion, is there any other way to go into SummerSlam for Cody Rhodes at this point? First of all, how the women's Money in the Bank match got a higher rating than the main event, no bueno. There's, there's no way in my opinion. There, there was more botches in that one that weren't pointed out as opposed to Damian Priest, you know, because he got pinned. I mean... Real quick, Zoe Stark taking that crazy pile driver from EO Sky and EO Sky delivering it completely the wrong way and, you know, dang near dislocating her hips. Right. You know, so real quick, my reading on that, because you didn't get mine in cues, I'm going to say about three. Oh, on the okay. oh, for the ladder match. Yeah. I'll say 3.5. 3.5. Um, so the men's money in the bank, you're absolutely right. It's got to be Solo and Cody. But even still, you know, I got a rumbly in my tummy, man. I'm, I might have to go take a Meltzer rating in the bathroom here in a second because his, his ratings are crap. Um, 2.75 for the men's main event match. Uh, but, yeah, it's got to be Cody and Solo. And just like you said, Q, the commentary, without the commentary building the story, and Michael Cole and Pat McAfee are doing an amazing job. Yeah, and... Uh, you know, I was always a Jim Ross, Bobby Heenan, or Gorilla Monsoon, you know, uh, Jesse Ventura guy. McAfee and Cole, man, they are they are going together nicely like peanut butter and jelly. I'm digging them. Yeah, they've definitely found their niche. They have found their, their comfort zone. The same can be said with Cole and Corey Graves when, when they're working, to, you know. But Corey Graves is being groomed to take – Michael Cole's place, yeah, in, in yeah. my view. Brian, the six-man tag team match, you're talking about an all-star team on, on the babyface side with Cody Rhodes, Orton, and, and Kevin Owens. Who winds up being the real loser in this match? Is it Rhodes or because the, there's so much attention on, on Rhodes and, and Solo? What happens now with Orton and Owens? That's a good question. Um... Cause I, I mean, there. That's two guys that don't like we. Were, me and you were talking yesterday. There are so many storylines going currently right now. It's like you. Gotta, it's hard to keep track of them all. But man, that's that's two of your main guys that do not have anything going other than their hatred of the bloodline. Yeah, yeah. I think Randy will. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've been telling Q, I, this bloodline 2.0, they are not inst instilling the fear that I feel like they need to, to be considered worthy of where they're being placed on the, the cards even. Like, as it is now, Roman, I mean, he was champ for one of the longest reigns of all time. What has Solo done? 
any of them. Like they're not doing anything. Like it's like it's like bloodline negative 2.0. Is this where Jacob Fatu starts to really establish himself to the WWE audience? Because, I mean, the smart marks know who he is. Yeah. But the casual WWE fans, I mean, they may know the name, but they don't know his reputation. With the as unpredictable and, and the reputation that this dude has in real life. Yeah. And this new regime that you referred to in terms of Triple H being the you know head of of the creative and all this other stuff, is this where we really start to blend that line between re reality to give this new version of the Bloodline some credibility that doesn't involve Roman Reigns? Oh yeah, it's gonna start with Jacob, <laughs> for real. Like the the one thing Solo has is the, he can he can make the claim that. You wouldn't have held that title, Roman, if it wasn't for me spiking these guys without the referee seeing it. Mm -hmm. You know, all those years, you had the solo interference, you know, the enforcer coming in, spiking everyone. So that's the only thing Solo got, but that's not enough. You know, so Jacob is going to be that guy. Okay. Well, uh, Money in the Bank overall, you know, average card at best in terms of the feedback that I had seen online, but you, you talk about uh, these the star ratings system it was a better than average event according to mr. Meltzer uh, we're gonna m move along here in the show because two guys are establishing themselves as main event players in the making under the umbrella of WWE and they're coming out of other organizations they're coming out of you know, these other, you know, previous incarnations, and they're starting to make the splash, a big one. Currently, under the, under the banner of NXT, let's start with Ethan Page. This guy comes in and um, wins the NXT championship faster than any other rookie uh, in NXT history. And that's not to say that he's a rookie because he's well-established in AEW especially, but him coming over to NXT and winning the title so fast, mm -hmm. they got big plans for, for all ego here, right? Oh yeah, that was a, that was a message. That yeah. was WWE saying, look, we're good. If, you, if you make that jump when your contract is over, you make that jump, we will treat you well. Yeah. Look at that, four matches in. <laughs> <laughs> It's like 40 days. So, Four yeah, matches in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's he's holding the strap. I mean, come on now. That was definitely a message for AEW's talent. You know, if you want to jump over, we will treat you nice. Yeah, it was pretty remarkable because this is one of the real first big jumps from AEW, an AEW star coming over to the overall umbrella of WWE. In, in the last handful of months, in the last hand, you know, year or so, this is, a, for, like he was saying, a big shout-out to the AEW roster because you go on these websites, there is, there is a lot of dissension right now within AEW and their locker room. Ethan Page winning the NXT title, um, is this, is this going to be step one? Do you see him making a bigger splash on the main roster? Um, I feel like we're got, we have to see it. I mean, the fact, like you said, that they gave him the title so quickly, taking out Kevin Owens' record, which, I mean, you know, he's like a, a darling for yeah. WWE. Yeah. Like, they care a lot about him. So them to take away that record, they got to be doing something with it. The other one here, Sean, is I know you are a big fan of. Joe Hendry. Where's the camera? Oh, he's going to show up? <laughs> I believe in Joe Hendry. We believe in oh, you, Joe. I believe. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. Old toilet seat head joins us again here this week in the studio here in Lakeland. Come on over here. Come on. Show your sign. Oh, you didn't finish coming. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in a rush. He, he, Stand over here and show the, show the people your nice sign that you right, made. That's, nice sign. He, he believes in Joe Hendry. I in Joe. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> 
old toilet seat. He right? really likes Henry after that sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can we say that? I, I just did. I um, Yikes. <laughs> 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 uh, <Not a> commercial. <laughs> Joe Henry is the uh, one of the ones that's benefiting big time from this co- this collaboration between WWE or NXT and TNA. Right. First we saw Jordan Grace. Now we see Joe Hendry. And as we came into the studio today, it's our understanding he got added to the WWE roster. Uh, so what does this say for the future plans for, for this guy? I don't know, because everything that we've said about this so far has been right. We said Joe Henry was going to come in and make a big splash. Ethan Page come in, we said he was going to make a big splash. Also, Zachary Wentz and Trey Miguel showed up. They reunited the Rascals with Wes Lee. Yeah. You know, he called that as well. Uh, I believe in the Fatal 4-Way is what I believe in right now because yeah. we are nailing it as far as these predictions go. Joe Hendry, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Hendry uh, you know, his, his song his song is what pushed him, let's face yeah. it. But it's his skill that's ta- <laughs> taken him to NXT. Yeah. You know, the song got him noticed. His ring skills putting him in the main event here at the last NXT show. I think it's incredible. You know, Ethan Page... He's got roots here in Michigan. He, he, when he first started, he was here in XICW to see where he's at. I am super excited about this merger with TNA. I, I can't wait to see who comes next. We got a Mount Rushmore coming up. I got a TNA guy on that. I am looking forward to the future of NXT. More so, you know, I used to be excited about AEW. <laughs> Not so much anymore. It's all about NXT and TNA now. Brian, you look at this graphic. Yes. Is this a WrestleMania main event within two years, three years? No. 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 (laughs) Especially not that quickly. Not the way WWE is. They hold on to their talent for a long time. I'm like, I mean, who's, and like for between Raw and SmackDown's held a title, like the big titles, that isn't been an established star for decades. It's a fair point. I mean, could I see that being an IC match at WrestleMania in a couple years? Yes, absolutely. Do you see a ceiling for, for these guys? I can see this being a WrestleMania main event in about six, seven years. You know, it's, there's a high ceiling for uh, both of these guys. I mean, they both have c- character. And uh, that's, man, that Joe Hendry song, man. I've been singing that all week, <laughs> man, ever since he showed up in that main event. It's uh, it's just so freaking catchy. It's in my head right now, and that's all I can hear. So I'm I'm all all in, you know. No pun intended. Uh, I don't even have a camera <laughs> on me, but I keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm seeing Ethan Page eventually teaming up with Austin Theory. I mean, their gimmicks are so similar. Yeah. I I think they would make a great tag team. For some of the smart marks, this would be a dream match. And when we talk about dream matches, we got to talk about this upcoming match real quick before we go to break here. Um, AEW is promoting what they are deeming a dream match between Will Ospreay and MJF. Um, Self-admittedly, I am not a huge follower of All Elite Wrestling, but I know enough to know a little bit especially when it comes to these two guys. Um, On paper, the word dream match, grossly overrated. Am I wrong here, Q? Not at all. I mean, it's somebody's dream. It might not be be our dream, but, uh, you know, it's somebody's dream, and I hope they really enjoy it, you know. uh, It's Tony Khan's dream. Well, maybe you can give it it five stars, you know, so... uh, (laughs) That's Six if it's in the Tokyo Dome. Yeah, yeah. So I think it'll be a. I mean, I'm not too familiar with uh, Will Ospreay. Yeah, I've been, I've I've seen his matches. I know he's a big acrobat. He's pretty much Ricochet, who we might see <laughs> very shortly. Very shortly. Yeah. As somebody who follows AEW way closer than I do, and that's in, in the limited time that you do. What does this match mean? I mean, is this their main event? Is this what we're supposed, is this match what I, as a casual fan, am supposed to be you know, drawn into, and if so, why? 
it's supposed to be. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the interviews with him. These interviews can be shut real, down real quick by Will Ospreay, but he's not that smart. Uh, MJF is going out saying he's the best wrestler in the world, but he doesn't have any gold. All Ospreay's got to say is, well, I'm the champ, bud. You might be the best, but I'm the champ. Shuts it down right there. This is a Tony Khan dream match. Uh, is it going to be a good match? Well, it's not going to be no savage steamboat. Right. I think it'll be good. I think it'll be in the upper echelon of what AEW matches are. But as far as a dream match goes, no, absolutely not for me personally. Uh, Dave Meltzer will probably give it five stars. Yeah, he is. Where are you at on this, Brian? Six stars. <laughs> I'm probably not going to watch it. For Just like most of AEW. Right. Which I feel like... I Almost, I'm like, man, being on a wrestling TV show, maybe I should spend more time watching AEW. But give us something to get invested in. Yeah. You know, oh, is it on TV? Yeah. It's on TBS. It's on the TV, oh. man. <laughs> for, for the <laughs> 250th episode of Dynamite. Oh, but let's, maybe I'll check. Let's, check let's, let's be serious here for a minute. I mean, you guys are poo-pooing on AEW. I, I do watch it. I mean, they... They are driving some storylines hard right now. They got, you know, uh, you have to Tony Storm and Mariah May is a really good storyline right now. Uh, this is an okay storyline. Like the, the return of Hangman Adam Page is a good storyline. The Young Bucks, Bucks being the CEO. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, yeah, I didn't mean that. That was a Freudian slip. Yeah, you, you said it right the um, first time. <laughs> you know, uh, their storyline's going really well right now. There are stories happening in AEW. They are finally starting to get creative. The, the, the problem is, is their creative is not on par of what the WWE is producing right now. So it's completely overshadowing anything that's happening here. Uh, I do watch this. Uh, some stuff I do enjoy. Uh, the main event of the Owen, H Cup, Owen Hart, Hart Cup Memorial Tournament uh, was incredible. And the finish uh, where Mariah May, I think her name's Mariah May, turned on Tony Storm and bloodied her at I the see, end I of the show. See see to see a female wearing all white, bleeding profusely from the head as her opponent is driving the heel of her high heel into her head and it goes to black, it's compelling stuff, some of it. So while it's not on par with what you guys are seeing in WWE right now, they are making some bigger and better strides. That's the problem, though. It's like we have Raw. We have SmackDown. You have NXT with the TNA and like working relationship. Now you also want to watch TNA because of that relationship. Man, it, it's I, who, I don't have time for AEW at this point, especially with their multiple shows and their thousand belts. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know, I've said it before on the hot tag. Wrestling is a buffet, and that's probably why I'm so fat. Is because I am ingesting it all. I am watching everything I can because. It's so diverse right now. You you could take a little bit of this and a little bit of this and put it together. I mean, look what NXT is doing with TNA. It's absolutely incredible. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be something to see. I know there's going to be a, a strong contingent of the wrestling fan base that is going to tune in Wednesday to see how that match unfolds. Right now, we are going to run a real quick break, and when we come back, we're going to do the Mount Rushmore this week, and then we will tie it up with um, a preview of sorts of what's coming up. With that, we'll be back with more of the Fatal 4-Way right after this. It's called shooting the ropes. Did you hear that noise? That's right, the 21st annual Big Rig Gig is coming to Orion Township Friday, August 2nd from 5 to 9. Save the date for an evening full of trucks, tractors, bulldozers, construction equipment, police cars, fire trucks, and more. Grab your cameras to capture a night to remember with the people you'll never forget. From seeing vehicles of all shapes and sizes used around town, to the experience of climbing on and through the many machines, honking the horn, and meeting different staff members who work the vehicles daily, this event is a wide load of laughs, all for free. Located at Friendship Park on the corner of Clarkston and Baldwin Roads in Orion Township, be there and join other families to make a strong and healthy community to share the excitement today, tomorrow, and for future generations to come. For more information, call 248-391-0304, extension 3500, or visit orionparks.com. All About Connections is a 90-minute suicide prevention training hosted by the North Oakland Community Coalition. 
This training uses the QPR method to educate and prepare participants to recognize warning signs of suicidal ideation and supply resources to their friends and family. We offer All About Connections to strengthen our bonds and ensure the Lake Orion community is fully supported by the people around them. We are available for ages 14 and up and can customize your training to your group. Whether it is a business owner and their employees or a group of parents with their future college students, this is a great opportunity to connect with one another and build confidence that everyone is prepared to help their friends and family in a crisis. If you would like to schedule a training or learn more about All About Connections, email Jill McCollum at jmccollum at nocmi.org. And we welcome you back to the Fatal 4-Way live here on ONTV. We certainly appreciate you tuning in here this week. Brian, this is one of the more anticipated segments of each and every episode. Let's turn it over to you, my friend, for the Mount Rushmore this week. Okay. Um, yeah, we ended up going with our... There we are. St. <laughs> John Cino Tinohead. is all in the news because he's on his retirement tour. Mm -hmm. We decided that we would do what we thought would be his best next four opponents. All right. Uh, very good. Uh, Brian, Ooh, this is me. your pick. So kind of walk us through this. Um, first, I'll, I'm going to jump in around the squares. I went Chad Gable. That's more of just a matchup styles. I feel like they would match up quite well. Um, I went Kevin Owens because he's lacking a storyline. It would be great to have him in there. Uh, R-Truth, just for the fun of it. Yeah. For the move sets, it's fun. And then <laughs> because it's his two biggest opponents in the history, RK, or how we'll say RKO, Randy Orton and CM Punk, and I put that one in the Hell in a Cell because we haven't did a three-way Hell in a Cell. Don't think we have. Uh, and you're absolutely right. Those are two of his uh, his greatest opponents. And if, if he's going to wrap this thing up, put a bow on it, Hell in the Cell is about as, you know, the final answer as you can get, right? Sean, we're going to take it over to your pick for Cena's uh, dream opponents. Kind of walk us through your Mount Rushmore. Well, of course, Gunther. I, yeah. th I think... You know, if Gunther's going to become God, he has to take down God. So I, I want to see Gunther take down Cena. L.A. Knight, he needs a push. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so I think that would be great. I want to go over to MJF first before I go to my last pick. I think MJF and John Cena on a microphone it would just be, be magic. Uh, gold. Yeah. Um, I don't even want to see him wrestle. I just want to see a rap battle between the two. <laughs> I think that'd be hilarious. <laughs> but then my last one is uh, TNA's Moose. I figure if we're going to do this merger, we got to give them a push. And what better way to do? I mean, even if Cena was to go over Moose to be able to hang with the best of the best, yeah. I think would say a lot for TNA. All right, so some great picks there, and I can see that all that playing out. Hollywood, we're going to turn it over to your picks. Walk us through it. All right, for me, I don't have a dream match for John Cena. <laughs> I love the guy; he was he, he, he was awesome. Uh, it's he had a great career. For me, for 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 John Cena, I would say just play the greatest hits. I don't want to see anything new for John Cena because it does not do anybody any favors. <laughs> As we, you, you can go ask Austin Theory that. It, it, it didn't do him any favors. It didn't do Solo any favors. I say uh, just play the greatest hits and then ride on out into the sunset. Those are his greatest hits, absolutely. He's had amazing matches with all four of those guys uh, for various reasons. My, uh, my Mount Rushmore is a, a kind of a potpourri, I guess. It's, a, it's all newer starts, for for the lack of a better term. But they, but guys that I thought that he would work well with, either on the microphone and or in the ring, with Gunther, with McIntyre, with Fatu, and Logan Paul would be my wild card in this, just because of the the promo battle. John Cena could humble Logan Paul on the microphone, I feel like, and I would be here for it, for sure, <laughs> you know, to, to see that unfold. So, uh, it's, he sent a lot of shockwaves, man, for, you know, you're gonna get 30 to 40 dates left on his bump card, as it were, 
Uh, so the John Cena retirement tour officially apparently is going to kick off in January. He's aiming to work from January all the way to the end of the year, so he's going he's going to be at all the PLEs and and all that. So, so he can face all of our guys. He really could. You know, so it's going to be interesting to see what they do with him in Except terms. For MJF. <laughs> <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> well, you never say never. You never know? say you never. Never yeah, say you're never. Right. You're right. Anything can happen in this world of prof- this crazy world of professional wrestling. Mr. Grugel? Yes, sir. Let's turn it over to you, sir, for uh, your segment this week. Oh, oh man. Yeah. So. Indie yeah. <laughs> well, you know, uh, Indie Roundup. We announced it two weeks ago that it is dead. This is a new segment called Shooting the Ropes. But I really wish that I had some sort of forum to be able to express what shows I'm going to. Because I start vacation like today. But unfortunately, no promoters would send me nothing. So Shooting the Ropes will be a thing in two weeks. So. Um, but if you get the chance, check out the guys that were sending us shows, XICW, Capital Pro Wrestling, IWE, and uh, am I missing one here? Uh, John Campbell, oh, Metro Pro Wrestling, Johnny Bubba Adkins. So check, check out those shows. Everyone else, they didn't want to be a part of it, so to you, okay? But in two weeks, Jason, I'm going to turn it over to you. We got a big deal happening here at On TV Studios. We do, and we, and this is how we will uh, close out this week's episode because we wanted to expand a little bit more on a big event that is happening right here in two weeks live, and you can be a part of it. Weather permitting, we are taking the show outdoors to the parking lot here, and we are having what we are calling the slamming summer party from the Fatal 4-Way. The four of us are hosting a summer party. We are inviting all of you to join us. Bring your chairs, bring your blankets, bring your beach towels. Come be a part of the live studio audience, be a part of the conversation. And as an incentive, I'm gonna be manning the grill, Q. We're we're gonna be providing some grilled hot dogs, some water, while supplies last. Um, we wanted to incorporate our fans, our supporters, the ones who tune in each and every time that we do this. And this was our way of saying thank you. And why not tie into the biggest party of the summer or the show that is billed as that? And this will be our very special Summer Slam preview episode. Uh, we've talked a lot here tonight about potential matches that um, are on the docket for Cleveland on August the 3rd. Uh, We know for sure at this point, unless anything changes, it will be Priest and Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship and Nia Jax will challenge Bayley for the World Women's Championship or the WWE Women's Championship. Anything can happen in the next two weeks, but we are going to break it all down live here on ON TV when we take the show outdoors. I am, this is our first, like, we've invited, We've invited the fans here to the studio for weeks. Sometimes they show up without an invitation. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Sometimes they show up with half-colored signs. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) 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 But this is our first time doing something extraordinary for the show. You know what I mean? Like, we're taking this thing outdoors, and this would not be a thing with... I need to make mention of this, and then I'll, I'll let you guys... Put, put in your two cents. None of this, all of this was an idea. Actually, Brian and I talked, it, it started here. It started with a conversation with Brian and I at our shoot job. And it started with, what if? Well, none of this would be possible without the support, unwavering su- support of Joe Johnson, Ian Locke, and all the fine people that make ONTV a reality. And without them, there wouldn't be us. There wouldn't be this opportunity. And without you, who tune in to watch what we're doing, there would be no purpose. There would be no reason to to do this. So this is our way of saying thank you to Joe, to Ian, to ONTV, to the fans for continuously supporting us week in and week out. And we hope that you will uh, circle the date, July the 26th, we're going to k- kick off the party part 
around 4.30 in the afternoon. So come on out early, get a spot around where we're going to be set up. Have, have a hot dog, have some water, enjoy what we're going to be doing. And we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have trivia a contest. We're going to have prize uh, a giveaways. We're going to have everything to make this as fan inclusive as we possibly can. I'm excited about this. How, how about you, Q? Man, I'm real excited about this, man. We get to hang out outside and get some sunlight, man. I love it. And uh, talk about a little, talk a little bit about some wrestling. You know, wrestle. Uh, what is it? SummerSlam coming up. Yep. I mean, it's an exciting time. I, I mean, I guarantee you, you come out, you're gonna enjoy yourself. Bring your kids. I got, I got a few of those. You know, I'm gonna bring some. You know, so we we, we can all have a good time. You know. Sean, we uh, you know. Back in the day, uh, you and I were known, we, we were known to bring the party when we were the power trip. Yes, sir. We are now incorporating that uh, into Fatal 4-Way. I'm looking forward to this. How, how about you? Man, I, I am looking so forward to this. And, you know, fans, you know, if you come out, man, be a part of it. Like, if you got questions for us, let's shoot, you know. Ask us questions. We'll tell you what, you know, we're not going to tell you exactly what you want to hear, but we'll tell you what you need to hear because that's what we're here for. We're here to break it down for you, give you the facts as we know it, and, you know, I'm just looking to have a good time. Sun's out, gun's out, right? Yep. Or in my case, gut's out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, all of this is weather permitting. Um, we ask you to stay tuned to our socials for all the latest updates as we get closer to that particular date. I saved this part because, like I said earlier, all this started with a conversation with Brian and I at our real life job one night. Actually, it was right after an episode that we did of this show. We worked that night and he and I were talking and it literally started with what if. And now that we have the blessing of ONTV, then it came down to how am I going to execute this. Um, Brian has not only been there from the very beginning in terms of the conversation, but he is offering to help me make this a reality. And with that, Brian, I just want to say this on a personal level. You know, your friendship has been a blessing for years at this point. And, and the fact that we are able to mesh our friendship into a professional realm and something that you and I are both passionate about and you know me well enough to know how important this idea was. And the fact that you have offered to help me execute this means more than I'll ever be able to really express. But just to put a bottom line on it, thank you oh, for you're everything. Welcome. You're welcome. I, I love how we can feed off each other's energy, especially, yeah. like you said, at our shoot jobs as well. But like, when we just start rolling ideas, I think that's, we come up with some great things. And it's gonna be great on July the 26th, two weeks from tonight, we invite you to join us for the Fatal 4-Way Slammin' Summer Party. There is actually a Facebook event page that w went up earlier this afternoon. At, at your suggestion. Uh, <laughs> Again, so, at the shoot job. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so stay tuned for that. That will have all of our latest um, news and information about this very special episode. So with that, we appreciate you tuning in here tonight, and we hope that you will join us in two weeks for our big outdoors summer party. Go out, be awesome to yourselves and to each other, and we will see you next time right here on the fatal four-way live on on tv